Hey boys and girls, it's Miss Waldrop. I wanted to come read a chapter book with you this morning. Now we're going to be reading in the Magic Tree House series. And if you're not aware, uh, in this series we meet two characters, Jack and Annie, and they find a Magic Tree House in the woods near their home. Now, anytime they visit this magic tree house, they get to go on these grand adventures. And while they're on these adventures, they get to solve riddles and mysteries. And once they've solved their riddle and mystery, they get to come back home and they wait for the magic tree house to reappear and um, their next big adventure. Now, we're going to be reading Magic Tree House number nine, Dolphins at Daybreak, and it's written by Mary Pope Osborne. Now this is a chapter book, so let's take a look at our table of contents. I am only reading the first two chapters to you today, but make sure that you come back every day because the other first grade teachers will be reading the rest of the book to you this week. All right, so let's find out what adventures they're going on. Chapter one, Master Librarians. Jack stared out the kitchen window. The sun was not up yet, but the sky was growing lighter. Jack had been awake for a long time. He had been thinking about the dream that he had had. The dream about Morgan Le Fay. The treehouse is back, Morgan had said. I'm waiting. Jack wished that dreams were real. He missed Morgan's magic treehouse. Jack, his little sister Annie appeared in the doorway. We have to go to the woods now, she said. Why? Jack asked. I had a dream about Morgan, exclaimed Annie. She said the treehouse is back and she's waiting for us. That was my dream, said Jack. Oh, wow, said Annie. She told you too? So it must be important. But dreams aren't real, said Jack. Some dreams aren't, but this one is, said Annie. I can just feel it. She opened the back door. I'll see you later. Wait, wait, I'm coming, said Jack. He raced up the stairs. Having the same dream must mean something, he thought. He grabbed his backpack and threw his notebook and pencil into it. Then he ran downstairs. We'll be back soon, Mom, Jack called into the living room. Where are you going so early? His dad called. Just for a quick walk, said Jack. It rained last night, said his mom. Don't get your shoes wet. We won't. Jack slipped out the door. Annie was waiting for him. Let's go, she said. The sky was pale gray. The air felt freshly washed. Jack and Annie ran up their quiet street to the Frog Creek Woods. They headed between the, between the trees. Soon they came to the tallest oak in the woods. There was a wooden house high in the treetop. It is back, whispered Jack. Someone looked out the window of the tree house. A lovely old woman with long white hair. Morgan Le Fay. Come up, called the magical librarian. Jack and Annie climbed up the rope ladder and into the treehouse. In the dawn light, they stared at Morgan Le Fay. She looked beautiful in a red velvet robe. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He couldn't stop smiling. We both had dreams about you, said Annie. I know, said Morgan. You do? Yes, I sent them to you, said Morgan because I needed your help. What kind of help, said Jack. Merlin the magician has been up to his tricks again, said Morgan, so I haven't had any time to collect books for Camelot's library. Can we collect them for you, asked Annie. Yes, but in order to gather books through time, you must be master librarian, said Morgan. Oh, well... Annie said sadly. But you can become master librarians, said Morgan, if you pass the test. Really? said Annie. What kind of test? Jack asked. 
You must show that you know how to do research, said Morgan, and show that you can find answers to hard questions. How, said Annie. By solving four riddles, said Morgan. She reached into the folds of her robe and pulled out a rolled up paper. The first riddle is written on this ancient scroll, she said. This book will help you find the answer. She held out a book. On the cover were the words, Ocean God. This is where you have to go, said Morgan. The ocean? Oh boy, said Annie. She pointed at the cover. I wish we... Stop! Jack grabbed Annie's hand. How will we know if we found the right answer to the riddle? He asked Morgan. You will know, Morgan said mysteriously. I promise, you will know. Jack let go of Annie's hand. She pointed again at the cover and finished her wish. I wish we could go there. The wind started to blow. Are you coming with us, Morgan? Jack said. Before Morgan could answer, the treehouse started to spin. Jack squeezed his eyes shut. The treehouse spun faster and faster. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Jack opened his eyes. Morgan Le Fay was gone. Only the ancient scroll and the ocean book were left in her place. Chapter 2 The Reef A breeze blew through the window. Seagulls cried. Waves lapped the shore. Annie picked up the riddle scroll. She unrolled it. Together, she and Jack read the riddle. Rough and gray as rock, I'm plain as plain can be. But hidden deep inside, there's a great beauty in me. What am I? Let's go find the answer, said Annie. She and Jack looked out the window. The treehouse wasn't in a tree. It was on the ground. Why is the ground pink, said Jack. I don't know, said Annie, but I'm going out there. I'm going to do a little research first, said Jack. Annie climbed out of the treehouse. Jack picked up the ocean book and flipped through it. He found a picture of a pink island surrounded by water. He read, This is a coral reef. Corals are tiny sea animals. After they die, their skeletons remain. Over time, the reef builds up from stacks of coral skeletons. Oh man, tiny skeletons, said Jack. He pulled out his notebook and wrote, Millions of coral skeletons. Jack! Jack! Come look at this! cried Annie. What is it? I don't know, but you'll love it, she said. Jack threw his notebook and the ocean book into his pack. He climbed out the window. Is it the answer to the riddle? he called. I don't think so. It doesn't look very plain, said Annie. She was standing at the edge of the water. Beside her was a strange-looking machine. Jack hurried over the bumpy coral to get a better look. The machine was half on the reef and half in the clear blue water. It looked like a huge white bubble with a big window. Is it a special kind of boat? asked Annie. Jack found a picture of the machine in the ocean book. He read, Scientists who study the ocean are called oceanographers. Sometimes they travel in small diving vessels called submersibles or mini subs to study the ocean floor. It's a mini sub, said Jack. He pulled out his notebook. Let's get inside it, said Annie. No, said Jack. Actually, he did want to see what the sub looked like inside, but he shook his head. We can't. It's not ours. Just a teeny peek, said Annie. It might help us figure out the riddle. Jack sighed. Okay, but we have to be careful. Don't touch anything, he said. 
Don't worry, said Annie. And take off your shoes so they won't get wet, said Jack. He and Annie slipped off their shoes and socks and threw them toward the tree house. Then they stepped carefully over the sharp coral. Annie turned the handle on the hatch of the mini sub. It opened. She and Jack climbed inside. The hatch slammed shut. The mini sub was tidy. Two seats faced the big window. In front of the seats was a computer built onto a control panel. Annie sat down. Jack opened the ocean book and read more on the mini sub page. Many subs have strong hulls to keep air in and protect those aboard from water pressure. Computers are used to guide the mini sub through the ocean. Oops, said Annie. What's wrong? Jack looked up. Annie was waving her hands in front of the computer. Now, the screen showed a map. What's going on? said Jack. I just pressed a few keys said Annie. What? I said not to touch anything, said Jack. An air blower came on. The mini sub jerked backward. Get out, said Jack. He and Annie scrambled for the hatch. Jack grabbed the handle, but they were too late. The mini sub slid off the reef. Then it dove silently down into the deep. Oh my goodness, guys, I cannot believe this is where the chapter stopped. I want to find out so bad what happens to uh, Jack and Annie out in the middle of this ocean in this mini sub that they don't know how to um, operate. So make sure that you come back tomorrow and find out what happens to them in the next chapter. Now, while you're waiting for tomorrow's chapters, there's something that you can be doing today. Go to your seesaw. Your teachers have put an activity on there for the chapters that we read today. So make sure that you go check that out.